Now, Philippines Nobel laureate Maria Ressa and her news site Rappler have been acquitted on charges of tax evasion. In what's being viewed as a significant legal victory for the journalist, a court ruled that Ressa had not avoided paying taxes on the sale of shares in Rappler to foreign investors. Former President Rodrigo Duterte had waged a campaign against Rappler, calling it a fake news outlet sponsored by American spies. Well, Maria Ressa joins us live now from Manila. Welcome to the program. We'll put simply then, how do you feel about this ruling? Uh, you know, I didn't know how to deal with last night because I just felt that this had to be an acquittal given that this is the fifth of, of five tax evasion charges and we were acquitted of four of them last January. Um, thank God. It was an acquittal, and it just reminded me, my gosh, you have to have faith. It took four years and 10 months, but we're acquitted. Rappler and I are, it is as we've said, these cases were meant to harass and intimidate us, and we just kept going. But indeed, you say it's taken years. I mean, how challenging have these... I think this is something Al Jazeera has covered through the years, right? Uh, in a little over a year, uh, I received 10 arrest warrants. Rappler itself has, from 2016, had exponential bottom-up social media attacks. In 2017, our president, Duterte, attacked us in a State of the Nation address. We got our first subpoena about a week later, and then we just kept the shutdown order. Happened in 2018, 2019. Ten arrest warrants, right? Out of those ten, this makes the eighth that is gone. So we have two criminal charges left. One of those has gone all the way to the Supreme Court. This is cyber libel. But the second one has already been has split into two. One has been um, remanded back to the fiscal. So that's almost done. But the one that still hangs like a Damocles sword over us is a civil case that could lead to our shutdown at any day. So we're kind of out of the woods, but not yet. Uh, even a vocal critic of former President uh, Rodrigo Duterte, do you still feel that your case was uh, politically motivated, even though this has now come out in your favour? Um, I'm sorry I didn't hear the last part, but if you're asking whether the cases are politically motivated, we've maintained this through this time period. Uh, the attacks that were allied with both Duterte and Marcos disinformation networks began in 2016. They were meant to tear down trust and credibility of Rappler and myself. And those were followed, these social media attacks followed by lawfare, just legal cases that drained our resources and drained our attention, frankly. You know, I want to quickly read to you what uh, Rappler's quick statement, which is this. This is a victory not just for Rappler, but for everyone who has kept the faith that a free and responsible press empowers communities and strengthens democracy. We share this with our colleagues in the industry who have been besieged by relentless online attacks, unjust arrests and detentions, and red tagging that have resulted in physical harm. Um, we've been through a difficult time period, I hope, we, it is starting, the atmosphere of fear has lifted, the cases have started to go away. But again, as I pointed out, we're not completely out of the woods yet, but we've been tested and we continue to hold the line and do our jobs. Indeed. How does this case resonate in the Philippines then? I mean, does this now set a precedent in terms of, of other journalists? Absolutely. I mean, it shows that doing the right thing is the right thing. And despite the long period of time it took, resolve the case, that you can have faith that there is a semblance of rule of law. And I think more important than that is the signal to the business community, right, that that random politically motivated cases will not come through, will not survive. And this is good news for the international investors that this administration hopes to bring in. How does this uh, affect you, though, personally? What kind of personal toll does this take? I mean, I think if you look at the four co-founders of Rappler, we've gotten Duterte Gray. <laughs> you know, we've we've weathered a lot, a lot of uncertainty. But I would say, you know, aside from I, mean, I wrote a, a book during this time period, aside from the lawfare that we dealt with and the challenges of being a journalist in a country like the Philippines, you know, you, we all face the same challenges, which is technology, right? Because if you look at the attacks that began against us, it started on 
American social media companies on the platforms that connect us. And as, as early as 2018, an MIT study showed that lies spread faster than facts. This is a problem when that corrupts the entire information ecosystem. So look, um, we have a lot of work ahead of us. It's going to be extremely challenging for news organizations around the world. And we are jumping in to try to find our way forward and create the journalism, the news organization that we want. Maria Ressa, we very much appreciate your time here on Al Jazeera. Thank you.